so I'm Ted Hope. I've uh, had the, the, the pleasure of getting to make a whole lot of movies, Seven, 70 plus films. Um, when I, when I uh, moved, I moved to New York City uh, in the early 80s, you know, all my clothes had holes in them, my hair stood up straight, um, I, I, I had hair. Um, and I used to think of myself a bit of a, as a punk rocker. I had the good luck of st uh, getting a job as a script reader for a company, um, New Line Cinema, yeah, on the day that their first hit film, Nightmare on Elm Street, came out. So I was their first reader. Not surprisingly, they gave me every single uh, story about Sid and Nancy um, to read that there was. And the best one was a script called Love Kills. It was by Alex Cox and Abby Wool, um, and it was beautiful. It was a beautiful story. It became the movie Sid and Nancy. And I was a, in addition to being a script reader, I was a PA, a production assistant, a gopher. And I had developed some good credits, but the one thing you couldn't say about me was that I was cool. I had glasses that were taped on the sides, you know, I talked a little too fast, I, you know, all of those things. But I wanted to get on this movie. And I had some friends that were cool, so they got hired, and they told me where the office was, and I would call up to, you know, uh, try to get an interview. I sent my resume in the five or six times. I showed up at four o'clock when I knew it would be dead, you know, gave them my resume, trying to, to, to get an interview, and they just said, you know, thank you, we'll call you if we'll be needing anybody. I didn't know what to do. You know, my uh, I had this friend Julia who, you know, she she this was all pre hair care product. So if you could make your hair stand up straight, you really had something you know special going on. Her hair stood up just like those uh, silhouettes on you know Sid and Nancy do. She wore black eye makeup across her face in one flat line. <laughs> she didn't wear any pants ever. Um, and you know, she got hired, and a guy named Joe Mama got hired. You know, you had you know the director of Studio 54, the movie. He got hired. I didn't get hired. So what did I do? So uh, I knew where the office was. I showed up at 7 a.m. one morning, bought two ba two cups of coffee from the deli. I stood in front of the door till 7:30. They got cold, so I went back to the deli, bought another set of coffee. No one showed up. Eight o'clock, finally, th second, third set of coffee. You know, uh, this woman showed up, and she said, "Oh, hi, I'm Caroline." Um, I said, "I'm Ted." She goes, "Are you here to work?" And I was like, "Absolutely." Um, she opened the door. She said, "Well, come on in." I said, "I'll just start by, uh, you know, I'll, I'll empty the trash, put new paper in the copier, you know, I'll, I'll go get fresh milk for, for everyone's coffee brew pot. Don't worry about anything." She was like, "Great." Everyone has a superpower, right? Well, my superpower is I probably sweat more than five human beings put together, <laughs> and people think it's a negative thing, but uh, for me, it makes me look like I'm always the hardest working person in the room. <laughs> You know, particularly if it's a room without windows, you know, as that production office was. End of the day comes along, you know, like I'm glistening gloriously. And uh, they're like, Ted, you work so hard. Is there anything we could do for you? And I said, well, I'd like to talk to the production manager. Why would you want to talk to the production manager? Because I'd like to get hired on this job. And they kind of like had blank faces. And they said, don't worry, Ted, you're hired. So I got hired on that job. Um, if you watch the film, if you've seen the film, when Gary Oldman ends up after falling down the stairs of the Chelsea Hotel and you know pulls himself together, that's the first time I ever got to call a roll or a cut on a on a set. You know, stuntmen fell down, Gary laid at the bottom, popped back up. You know, it, it meant a great deal to me. You'll see on that film, my credit is Theodore Hope. I didn't like how that looked, so subsequently every movie is Ted Hope. Um, they, they were wonderful people to me, uh, you know, brought me to the premiere at New York Film Festival at the party. They said, Ted, you like that band The Clash, right? Can I introduce you to Joe Strummer and Mick Jones, the lead singers of, uh, of, of The Clash? You know, they really took care of me. It was really a thrill. And it was then that I kind of developed my first motto on, you know, how to succeed in the film business, you know, don't ask for permission. Thank <laughs> you.